Welcome to What the Mom Podcast. You are listening to Doulas Petra and Jacqueline. Motherhood can be isolating and hard. We are two doulas that want to provide a place that's safe to talk about all things mom. From pregnancy to birth to postpartum to parenting. Join us as we have real conversations about real life. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Petra. And I'm Jacqueline. And welcome to What the Mom Podcast. Woohoo! Cheers. We're together. We're doing it in person today. <laughs> we thought we would do it in person because we're having a sleepover and we're just enjoying some girl time. So mm-hmm. what better thing to do than do a podcast together in person? That's right. And today's episode is going to be about how to prepare for a home birth because we both have experience with this. So we thought we'd share some of our advice and tips, yeah. what to do or what not to do for preparing. Yeah. But before we start, we are going to do a quick catch up. Mm -hmm. Um, Last week we had, or I guess two weeks ago, we had a special guest on our podcast. Yes, we did. That was really amazing. If you haven't watched that one yet, it's optimal nutrition during pregnancy and postpartum. And Sarah Klesko was a wealth of knowledge. She's amazing. That was great. Um, but we didn't do a kind of catch up because we had a special guest. So And we totally forgot to. Yeah. You <laughs> weren't supposed to tell them that. <laughs> Sorry. We're moms. And so we're, we're going to do it this time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Did you want to start? Sure. Something new that's happened to you Something recently. new. Mm, well, I got home from my vacation. And I feel like I need a vacation right from my vacation. <laughs> and I'm catching up on just house stuff, really. Can't really think of anything else. Yeah. I've just been busy with that. What about you? I recently started juicing, which has been fun. Because we got a juicer. I mean, it's not so fun to clean after, but <laughs> no. the juice that we've made with it has been really, really good. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, we didn't actually make any notes ahead of time. We're just going to kind of play this by ear. We're going to wing it. Yep. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> Hopefully it works well this way. <laughs> and I think <laughs> if it can't go wrong, you know, like we're just going to share a couple tips um, on what we did for home birth supplies. So, I mean, for the most part, when I got pregnant with my first and I decided to have a home birth, um, my midwife gave me a piece of paper and I remember uh, it was like probably towards the end of my pregnancy. Oh yeah. They were like, Oh yeah, we have like diapers to let you take home. And I was like, Oh, that's nice. These big diaper things and like big pads and like for mom. Yeah. And then also they gave us um, like a tarp and just a couple like birth supplies. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and so, and then the rest of the stuff we bought, um, I had home births with pools. And so, um, yeah, we got a pool from um, the same midwife place too, mm. uh, through passages and Petra actually used one of the pools as the well. Same kind, yeah. The same one from my midwife um, for her last. So, um yeah it's passages online you can find them they're really awesome they're pretty affordable uh i think it's a hundred dollars when you're not a client and 50 when you are so it's a pretty good deal yeah they're a nice size too they're comfortable yes um they're not they don't have like any extra features like the the seats or the handles and all that but i mean you get what you pay for right so Absolutely. Yeah, saving some money, but it's still comfortable enough to give birth. I enjoyed it. Yeah, they're really padded, which is really awesome. There's a part on the bottom you can blow up, and it's so you're just more comfortable. So um, that's a great resource. Um, can definitely link where you can get the pools. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you need a hose if you're going to have a um, pool. You need a hose and um, an adapter for your sink if it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's another thing that you would need. What else, Petra, can you think of? 
Um, I bought a generic liner to go inside of my pool. That's smart because now you can use it again. Mm -hmm. I did not use that and I just tossed mine every time. Um, but they were so beneficial to have regardless. And um, mm -hmm. But the third time I didn't get to birth in mine. So um, we ended up keeping it and we used it as a pool. You do? We do. We went to her house and we swam in it too. <laughs> I was like, this is my birth pool. They're like, ah, oh, and I'm like, but don't worry, I didn't use it. <laughs> Remember when I set mine up ahead of time, which is something I always suggest to do as well. Absolutely. Um, just doing like a test run. You don't have to fill it up with water right away, but filling it up with air, making sure it fits in the space that you want it to fit, making sure there's no leaks because that's the last thing you want when you're in the middle of labor. <laughs> um, yeah. But when I did my test run and I filled it up, I sat in it and I told my children, I said, yeah, this is where mommy's going to give birth hopefully. And this is the plan. And they got so excited. They hopped into the pool and, oh, take a picture of us in the birth pool. <laughs> it was really funny. I remember Ben, when we first um, set up Sophie's when I was giving birth, and he was like wanting to hover over it and like sit in it. He thought it was so cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. I remember that. Yeah. Birth girls also usually have a clear bottom tube or whatever of air at the bottom mm -hmm. so that the midwives can see underneath, like through a little bit easier. Yeah. They need to see what's going on with the birth of the baby and stuff. Yeah. Which Definitely. can make it a little easier as well. Very beneficial. Yeah. You will need a pump. Yep. to get it out after yeah. um, sometimes midwives will have one of their own that they can bring and use yeah sometimes there's ones you can rent or yeah. you can just purchase one yeah usually most of the time um for both of mine um they had a pump and they emptied it no problem for me and that is a huge blessing because that is the last thing I want to do is empty that out <laughs> for my husband I didn't even see what it looked like after because my midwife just emptied it for me and it was just all taken apart and it was like, kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it was really easy. She did it, no problem. Yeah. Um, there are places that will just rent birth pools to people mm -hmm. and they usually give it to you at 36 weeks up until they give you like two weeks after or something. I think so, because yeah. typically most will go. Or whenever you give birth. They can let you go over mm -hmm. two weeks typically a midwife will let you as long as everything is safe and yeah. mom and baby are okay so yeah and the rented ones will always have a liner um because they reuse them yeah <laughs> and that's not sanitary not to <laughs> Ew. um so a lot of people who do home births they really like the birth pool yeah absolutely um if, i would not have done it without yeah if you want to use water then I highly suggest it. I did labor in a tub for my second birth, mm -hmm. which we talked about in other episodes. Um, and this one, I had the birth pool. The tub was okay, but the birth pool was amazing. I know. That's what I would say. It's like next level comfort. Yeah. Just more space to move around. Tubs are usually smaller. If you have mm -hmm. a soaker tub and it's bigger and more spacious. Then it might be okay. Then it probably would be okay. But if you don't have a big enough one, then you have to clean your tub too. If you, you just do feel cramped, and yeah, mm -hmm. I would say 100% spend the extra money and get a birth pool. Mm -hmm. So, not only the water, but we also need to think about land births. So, if you're going to be birthing outside of the water, whether you're planning to birth outside of the water, water or whether that just happens, yeah, um, you need to prepare first of all your bed get a cover i did not and my water broke on it <laughs> and that sucked <laughs> and i still I you know. get so excited you go into the screen <laughs> oh my gosh my husband's like and i was like well i told you to get one and you didn't and now so that's what fun. happened yeah so always have a cover yeah some type of plastic cover you can buy them for pretty cheap oh yeah you can get it at a lot of places yeah. lots of different places i actually bought these waterproof sheets mm -hmm. um i got them online from what is the website called midwifery supplies or something 
I think you did. I remember yeah. you telling me about that. So they, they're waterproof sheets and you just lay them out underneath your fitted sheet. Yeah. And then it covers. Yeah. Protection. So that's another option that you could do something like that as well. Yeah. Um, so you need something to protect the mattress and it's good to have that underneath your fitted sheet just, just like before nice. labor even starts because of well your experience Jeff. because <laughs> you you're not going to be told when your water is going to break it might be before it might be during your baby might be born without it and mine just leaked it didn't even fully break yeah. and so you know i can't imagine if it fully broke mm -hmm. so then you need a um a second fitted sheet yeah because it's really good to have your clean fitted sheet on the bottom of the bed yeah and then your waterproof covering mm -hmm. and then the fitted sheet that if it gets stained gets dirty it doesn't it's not the end of the world yeah i agree because that way when everything is all said and done you take off that top fitted sheet you take off the waterproof cover and your bed's made <laughs> it is perfect <laughs> Oh man, I remember the the thing we tried to do to protect. I remember now. He <laughs> didn't buy a sheet, but we used garbage bags. Uh, so all you did is heard a garbage <laughs> bag <laughs> rustling. Every single time I would move, it was so oh, annoying. And then, of course, they move. Oh my goodness! But you can use garbage bags for pillows. You can absolutely, but That's not. What I did. If you don't have something to like tie under, like if you if you're like tying a whole bunch of garbage bags together and you can like or like tape them together, that's different. That may work, but if it's just sliding around on there, would not recommend them. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, for pillowcases, absolutely. I didn't do it like before labor started, but once labor started, we put garbage bags on the pillow and then the pillowcase over top of the. Garbage really, bag. I never would have thought about that. Yeah, because you never know like what's gonna get dirty. <laughs> and absolutely. as beautiful as birth is, it is messy. Oh, it is so messy. Absolutely. So then you also need a blanket that it can get dirty as well. Yeah. And um, I would say, yeah, just use like anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just used towels. It will, they'll wash off. It um, usually does, yeah. It usually does. And um, hydrogen peroxide is a really good well. thing. Um, for blood, it gets it out really well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely have some of that because there will be blood. Yes, it helps for cleaning. <laughs> Absolutely. And just like raggy towels that you can use because you're going to be mm -hmm. using them, especially for... You need quite a few too. You'll go through lots of towels. Absolutely. I can't remember how many, but I feel like... If you have a midwife, then they will almost... Like, they will tell you. They'll give you suggestions. Like, I would say for sure over 20, but I could be. I actually went to the secondhand store, and I got a blanket, and I got a bunch of towels, a couple face cloths. Mm -hmm. I just got it all secondhand so that it, I didn't care if it got too stained. And I feel like you gave them to me to use. Some of the stuff from Katarina's birth I did because I ended up going to the hospital. You went to the hospital. Her. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, I would say have lots of towels. Um, yeah. Another thing. Blue pads. Blue pads. And Either reusable or disposable. Yeah, and that's one thing the midwives did give us because you do use a lot of those, especially for, like, checks and stuff. You don't want mm -hmm. getting checked on your couch or anywhere without one of those because they get messy. Mm hmm Oh my gosh, that's like horror story. Just going back, <laughs> remembering that. <laughs> oh, so, labor. What else? Diapers, adult diapers. It is yeah. okay. Do not be embarrassed. No, that's I what was you're going to be I was my in. stuff, wearing my diaper around the house, and my husband just laughed at me. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I just gave birth to a baby. <laughs> I'm allowed to look hot in a diaper. <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys, another really good hack is to buy really big pads yeah. and put them inside the diapers. And then so it lasts longer. It lasts longer. Otherwise, um, you're just going to keep going through diapers. And I find mm -hmm. that they actually can leak if they're too big in that area. And yeah, it just causes a little mm -hmm. bit more comfort there yeah. as well. 
and some of those pads uh, make them into padsicles. So you can find recipes online. Absolutely. You said you didn't use padsicles, though. I did not, but regardless, you're so swollen down there, and it's there's like some. there's a lot of things that come out of there. So <laughs> you're gonna yeah. definitely want them, just in case. Yeah. I mean, I probably would have used them if I made them, but I just never thought of it. Yeah. It does feel really, really soothing to have cold. Um, Absolutely. A lot of hospitals, I don't want to say all, but a lot of them actually do have frozen pads that you can use. Really? I did not know that. I was given them at the Sturgeon Hospital in St. Albert. And the Alec? And the Alec in Edmonton. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think they gave me anything like that. I don't know if you have to request it or if they just give it to you. Hmm. But Yeah, but I made my patsicles by using... Um, Lavender oil or something? Aloe vera gel and witch hazel. Witch hazel. Yeah. Because the aloe vera gel is soothing and it's healing. Mm -hmm. And the witch hazel um, helps kind of disinfect a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's also very beneficial for killing like bacteria and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I did just a couple drops of lavender essential oil. Yeah. And... I was really, I really enjoyed having the lavender because things can be a little stinky sometimes. Absolutely. And when your bowels are not working properly yet, because it takes a little bit of time, mm -hmm. you can get a little gassy. So let's be it, honest. This it is going to sound any, a little bit gross, but it happens anyways. Don't but anytime I had some gas, I just smelled lavenders. <laughs> like, this is this fourth baby. <laughs> My older kids are like, Mom, why does it smell like flowers? <laughs> and you're like, because like, I oh. smell like flowers. I told you I fart flowers. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Yeah, but it is nice. Lavender is also very healing as well, though. It is has a lot of healing properties. I yeah. would say that's definitely a good idea. Yeah. So you just freeze them, and then I put some um, tin foil in between each layer so they didn't stick together. That's a good and idea. And I put it in a bowl so that it had that like curved shape as well. So then I just took it out of the freezer, put it in my pad, and that's it. That was nice. It, if you tear, you definitely want those. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It helps to heal and less pain, less discomfort. Um, speaking of pain, contractions after. Oh you give gosh, birth. have ibuprofen. Ooh, you're gonna want something. something, especially if it's not your first. Your first one, you'll have some, um, but usually it's not too bad. But every baby after that, it usually gets a little worse and a little worse. It absolutely it does. I can't imagine what it was like your fourth. Most people who had like nine, ten kids, so I don't know how they do it because <laughs> it's painful. My yeah. third was horrible, so yes, have something, and they will. I remember right after I had Laura lied, they were like giving me some Tylenol and Advil. I'm like, what? And they're like, this is for after yeah. your after pain. So it's like, oh, okay. Because yeah. I didn't remember. And then usually it's when they're breastfeeding. I wasn't taking them. But then when I started nursing her, it started to hurt. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was in labor again. And they were, they were like, yeah, that's why. And so you don't have to be a hero. It's not going to be the greatest feeling um you yeah. just do as you need it i mean i took it a few times for sure yeah. i don't love taking Tylenol and advil but i don't like feeling like <laughs> that either so yeah it's pretty intense it's very intense and for anyone who doesn't know what this is it's um anytime the oxytocin is flowing like when baby's suckling at the breast or when your body is just kind of doing its own thing, if, even Going if you're not breastfeeding, it's your body trying to shrink your uterus back. Yeah. Going back to its pre-pregnancy size, which takes a while. And so in the beginning when it's doing that, you can feel like the contractions, like squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. It's pretty intense. Yeah, it's um, really intense. I definitely. used uh, homeopathic medicine with my last two. Instead you said it really pain. helped, actually. Yeah, Arnica. Arnica was one. Yeah. I mean, it didn't fully get rid of it, but... You can definitely put it in the it comments and put yeah. whatever stuff um, we talk about. Yeah, that was just for my own research. On mm -hmm. things I heard about. it can help with, like, hemorrhaging and stuff, too. Yes, Arnica can help with that. 
right? Because, I mean, that's the last thing you want to happen. I mm -hmm. hemorrhaged really bad with both my kids. And then my third, I didn't at all. Mm -hmm. So I was so grateful. Yeah. You can look into homeopathic tinctures as well. Some mm -hmm. people use. I used tinctures with my third and fourth because I hemorrhaged mm -hmm. badly with my second, like transferred to the hospital hemorrhaging. And um, I remember that. I used Shepherd's Purse, which helps basically um, restrict the blood vessels and close them. Yeah. And stop the bleeding that way. But it can mm -hmm. only be used after the placenta has been burst. Otherwise, the placenta won't be able to come out. Yeah. So that's something you have to take after at that point. There are other tinctures that you can take before that, a um, few different kinds. Yeah. But I like taking that one. Yeah, I'm just looking at other uh, items. I guess pff, ice chips. I don't know. I liked popsicles. Yeah, That's for another thing. things to have during things labor. to have during labor. But going back, yeah, to a lot like of people like cold. List, um, have light food. You're not going to want to eat a ton because nobody really wants to. In early labor, it's important to do that. We talked about that in one of our other episodes. Absolutely, and then um, washcloths that we talked about. Um, hot water bottle can be really helpful. Also a heating pad. I really like those during yeah. the contractions. It kind of takes the edge off. I don't know, like the, the yeah, warming sensation because I wasn't always in the pool. Um, and a mirror. Um, that's another one. I had a mirror with Ben, I think, and my daughter. But the thing is, it was so dark when I gave birth to my daughter, so I wasn't really paying attention. But um, I definitely put a mirror down there so I could see yeah. his head coming out. I had um, one, but I didn't think to use it. And no one reminded me. <laughs> see? And, like, in labor, that's just something you're not going to think of. Because yeah. you're just, like, in a whole new world. So of... if it's something you really want to use, make sure you tell any of your support people, your healthcare provider, to kind of remind you. Absolutely. I would agree, too. Mm -hmm. um, I also suggest getting bendy straws. Mm hmm because it's super annoying when you're because when you're in labor you don't want to be picking up something to drink so that way if you have a bendy straw someone can just help kind of bring you the drink and then you just sit from the straw yeah it's a lot easier absolutely i agree it's what i used um what else if you're going to be laboring anywhere that's not in the pool not at your bed mm -hmm. then make sure you keep those blue pads or towels with you too wherever you are whether it's like some yeah. people like to be in like their living room or you know wherever you're comfortable i would also put a tarp under the pool yes they usually come with one yeah, yeah. definitely put a tarp under there um as far as supplies for your baby obviously diapers um some newborn clothes, receiving blankets. You're all going to have that at your house, most likely. Um, they're going to live in a sleeper, so just have a couple sleepers. And if you're not sure if you're having a boy or girl, have one or each, one of each of them out just in case. When um, we had surprise genders, I just did, like, white or gray. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um one thing I always made sure to have was coconut oil for the baby's bum. Absolutely. So hospitals will give you Vaseline. And but Vaseline is not good. Yeah, personally, petroleum we want oil. nothing to do with the petroleum jelly. Yeah. Um, our research has just shown that it's not very safe to be absorbed to the body, to be on the skin. Yeah. So coconut oil, on the other hand, is very safe and beneficial. And yeah. it does the same thing. So... Basically, all it's the Vaseline or the coconut oil does is it stops the baby's bum from having that first poo, the meconium, sticking to it. Because yeah. if you don't put anything on the baby's bum and they poo, it's going to get stuck. It's going to get stuck on their bum. And it's going to be hard to get off and they're going to be crying. And they're going to cry because it gets really yeah. red and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So every day for change, you put just put a little bit of coconut oil on. So I had, yeah, a, I, did I just put a little bit of coconut oil in a small little uh, mason jar. Yeah. And then I put one. That way it didn't matter if it melted a little because it's contained. And I had one in my bedroom and I had one in my emergency bag. Yeah. Just in case. Just because, yeah, it does. It is very, like, mm. hard to come off. And um, it's just very irritating to the baby's mm. bottom. So 
definitely a good thing to do. Um, you also have to think about what you want to wear or not wear in labor. Some women, they like to just be completely naked and they feel most comfortable that way. Yeah. I mean, you're at home. You can do whatever you want. I say like a sports bra. Some is people like choose to just, easy. yeah, just have a sports bra or a bikini top or something like that on just so the top is And covered. like shorts or something. Like yeah. Wear in the water. Um, I've seen some people do like a swim skirt if they want to be more covered and more modest because... They have a birth photographer there or so something funny. like you never know right i was like i want everything covered and then i remember my husband's like do you realize that you just like didn't care and you were <laughs> bought naked and you were just like no care in the world and like yeah well no i was gonna wear it but then you just you're in a whole new world of pain you're not thinking about that and so yeah I would say the easiest thing is like just wear like yeah a sports bra it just makes you feel more comfortable especially if you're having pictures mm -hmm. and then um just something on your bottom if you want to mm -hmm. but when you're in the water I mean it's not really gonna matter just whatever your comfort level is. and if you're thinking you might wear something after the baby's born have something that's easy and to kind of get on and off the top for trying to get that breastfeeding in right because mm -hmm. it's important to try to um do that right away have baby for the best results yeah yeah and skin to skin is always super important for babies yeah it helps them regulate their body temperature it helps them regulate so their breathing amazing. They so just feel more comforted because they're close to mom. They can smell you. They mm -hmm. know your smell. They've been smelling you this entire time. It's the coolest thing. The so same cool. smell of the placenta or the amniotic fluid is actually being secreted around your areola, right by the nipple. It's amazing. It's the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. It's so neat. <laughs> it makes you want more. And then you're like, wait a second. <laughs> That's not happening. Well, not for you. No, definitely. <laughs> for me, it's a big question mark. <laughs> for me, it's definitely not a question mark. Um, I feel like we went through most of the stuff. Can you think of anything else? Um, um, I liked having my birth affirmations up on the wall. See, that is a great idea. I had them on cards, and mm -hmm. I did um, read them to myself, but... And like I had praise and worship on, that's just like something that I do. Mm -hmm. um, that was really helpful. And sometimes like um, when I was laboring in the bathroom on the toilet, I had just like candles. And um, then my midwife, she actually brought a candle and she brought some um, essential oils and stuff to make it smell nice. Mm -hmm. And I had the lights down. So I would say like anything that's just like soothing to you and relaxing um, is a really good thing to do. Um, yeah, like the ma the music for me was a big thing. Mm -hmm. And then like your affirmation thing with um, your um, the hypnobirthing, hypnobirthing track. track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very relaxing. Even when I was at her birth, her last mm -hmm. one, and I was listening to it, it was really soothing. And I really liked it how it was like affirmations. And it was also Christian based. I really liked that. So mm -hmm. It was really nice. I yeah. remember with my second birth, I had affirmations all over the walls and all the rooms I wasn't sure I'd want to labor in. So I had them in both my washrooms because mm -hmm. the one um, is the ensuite, but it's a little bit tighter. And then the other one is further from my bedroom, but it's larger. So I wasn't sure where I'd be. So I put out some affirmations in each washroom. I put some in my bedroom by my bed. Yeah. I put some in the living room by my couch. I had them kind of all over and I read them throughout pregnancy. And then mm -hmm. when I was in labor, I remember at one point being in the bathtub and they were getting a little bit more intense. Mm -hmm. And I remember I must have been hitting transition because that's when I was doubting myself. Like, I don't know if I could do this. Like, what am I doing? And then I remember my doula just said to me, Petra, you can do anything for two minutes. That was one of my affirmations that was on the wall. She read it. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh. I know, I know. And then she goes, Petra, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That was another one that I had written on the wall. She yeah. just kept reading them, all of them that I had up there. And that was just like a, a really good reminder to me, like, oh, yeah, you know what? I, I can do this. I got this. 
And that's the thing though, is it did help for sure. But my labor, my third labor was so brutal. And it, it just, depends on how, how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, wow, I'm writing my affirmations. <laughs> I'm having to try for the hospital. I was so mad and so bitter and angry. Yeah. And my husband's like, it's okay. Let me go get your affirmations. Don't kill me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Oh, like man. it really, I don't know. It is just, it is just like getting that into your, into your head that like you can do it. And I think having those, having that track would have really helped yeah. because she was so relaxed. I didn't even know she was having a contraction. Like mm -hmm. I was like, are you kidding me lady at this point? Mm -hmm. I look like a orangutan jumping around. <laughs> it's not a competition. No, but I'm just saying, <laughs> like, it really is, like, yeah. the way that you focus and, like, yeah. And also, like, birth where you feel is the most comforting for you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. That's, like, the most important thing. But if you're thinking about a home birth, we hope these tips and tricks helped you. Um, it really is an amazing experience. I would not do it any other way. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely not. I was just thinking as well, a few garbage bags. Yes. For easy cleanup. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you'll just be just tossing everything into the washing machine yeah. after. And some food prepped ahead of time. If yeah. you prep food and you have it in the fridge or the freezer, I then agree. your partner, your doula, your friend, whoever's there, whoever's they there. can just grab it out and it's already made and ready to go because you will be hungry after you give birth. You will. <laughs> Having an electrolyte drink is really important. Petra did coconut water um, because it is going to take some energy and strength to give birth. So mm -hmm, make sure that you're always hydrated all the time and it will make um, labor go smoother too. So it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's other things that you could add to the list, but that's kind of a nice yeah start. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions, put in the comment box and reach out. Reach out. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. Bye, Cheers. Everyone. Bye.